It's been two weeks since the Vision Pro came out and I've been loving using it, but it's not been a perfect experience. I have run into some issues with it, so today I wanted to go over some of the downsides of using this $3,500 headset. Okay, so firstly, I wanted to go over some of the issues that I've run into with the hardware of the device, and that's gonna be starting with the Solo Knit Band. Honestly, I love this thing at first. It's really soft and it's very easy to adjust it, using the little dial on the side. It's really just really functional when it comes to putting it on and taking it off and adjusting it in real time. But after the first few days of using the Vision Pro, I was still noticing a lot of weight and strain on my face, especially around my nose and cheekbones. So I figured I may as well try the dual loop band because it has the strap that goes over the top of your head as well. And while this thing is so much better than the Solo Net band for that reason alone. The amount of pressure that this thing takes off of my face has been a game changer, especially for letting me use the headset for longer amounts of time. While you're wearing it, the Vision Pro just feels heavy, especially because it's so lopsided on the front here. There's basically no weight on the back. So all of the weight of the computer and all the metal and glass right here basically just rests right on your cheeks and on your nose. So using the Solo Knit Band just isn't as good because it doesn't have any support over the top of your head, which is where most of the weight's gonna be relieved when you're using the Dual Loop Band. And honestly, it's really unfortunate that I'm not gonna be using the Solo Knit band because I do like this a lot better, especially in terms of how wide it is and just how much more comfortable it is. Now what I wish Apple did was release it with a dual knit band, basically meaning that you'd have one of these on the back and one on the top. If they did that, I think it'd be the best of both worlds because it'd be easy to adjust it in real time and also just a lot more comfortable than using one or the other. And this is actually something that people are doing. I've seen on the Vision Pro subreddit that people go out and buy a separate solo knit band. They 3D print a part that connects right here onto the Vision Pro. And using that, they can use two separate solo knit bands to make it more functional and more comfortable. Now, I would love to do that, but I don't really feel like spending an extra $100 on another strap on a device that already costs $3,500. Now, another gripe that I've had with the Vision Pro is that it's actually pretty difficult to share it amongst other people. Now this is kind of a double-edged sword because the way the Vision Pro works is it's kind of custom fit to your face. They do take measurements and do a facial scan when you buy it so that you only get appropriately sized pieces to connect to your face and around your head. And all of that means that the Vision Pro is going to be very comfortable for you to use, but if you try to share it with someone else that doesn't have the exact same facial or head structure as you, it's not going to be as comfortable for them. My wife, for example, has had a much less comfortable experience using the Vision Pro. She still loves it, but she gets a lot more strain, especially on her cheekbones after using it, I assume just because it's not really fitted to her face well. And on that note, if you do plan on sharing a Vision Pro with someone, you do also have to frequently re-scan your hands and recalibrate your eyes when you put it on. And yes, recalibrating is very easy. You can ask Siri to open it up for you, but it does get kind of tedious if you're switching back and forth a lot. And on that note, I have noticed that I've had to realign the lenses and recalibrate the eyes a few different times to try to get everything fine-tuned and part of that might be because when I first set it up I was probably really excited and didn't really pay attention as much as I should have when I was calibrating it but either way and even after recalibrating it I have had some issues with the eye detection not knowing exactly what I'm looking at this is especially true if you're trying to do something where the buttons are really close together like pressing the wrong key on a keyboard that's right next to what you were trying to select or instead of moving a window around your space you might end up accidentally accidentally closing it if the eye calibration isn't correct. Otherwise, as far as the hardware goes, the only other gripe I've had with it is with the battery pack. This thing is a pretty good shape and size. It fits well in a pocket and it basically just feels like an iPhone if you do have it in your pocket. But I have noticed, especially because of how rounded the corners are and how smooth the surface is, it has ended up falling out of my pocket a few times when I'm sitting down. And this has happened, unfortunately, while I'm in my office chair where it falls not only onto a soft surface like a couch, but it usually falls all the way down to the ground. Luckily, even after a few drops, I mean, this hasn't had any dings or scratches on it yet, which I do appreciate, but that is something to consider. Other than that, the cord that connects the battery to the headset does also kind of get in the way sometimes. I do find myself pushing it out of the way more often than I thought I would have to. And the length of the cord is good, but it does end up pulling or tugging on things accidentally sometimes. Like if I'm going from sitting to standing in the office chair and I try to walk away, it might end up pulling on the office chair, which could pull on the headset or pull the battery pack out of my pocket. 
Now, don't get me wrong, I do think that this is a bit of a necessary evil because I think it's a lot better to have an external battery than it would be to have more added weight to the headset itself. But either way, those few things I mentioned are a con nonetheless. And on that note, the battery life isn't superb either. I mean, I guess we did know that going into it because it was only advertised as having about two hours of battery life. And using this device untethered is really amazing. I love being able to put it on, put the battery pack in my pocket, and walk around my house with relative ease. But when you end up using it a lot, it does feel like it needs to be charged pretty frequently too. Good thing is you can use it while it's charging and just sit down and plug it in. But again, you're not going to be able to walk around with it on all day without charging. Now let's move on to some of the software limitations. Honestly, my biggest gripe with the Vision Pro's native apps is with the App Store itself. It does do a great job of displaying some of the select few apps that Apple made or that are a part of Apple Arcade. But outside of that, it's honestly really hard to find anything else, especially with third party apps. Before this device even launched, we were told that there were going to be over 600 Built for Vision Pro apps on release day. And although that might be true, there's no way to actually find those apps unless you're basically directly searching for them, which you'd have no way of knowing what to search for if you don't know what the apps are. There's no way to browse all apps or search through different categories or filters, again, other than through those select few apps that Apple has catered on the homepage of the App Store. And this really is a bummer because there are are some great third-party apps out there made by independent developers that are basically getting no traction, no downloads, because no one's able to find them. I will be releasing a video soon going into some of my favorite third-party apps, so make sure you stay tuned if you want to see that. Moving on, another thing that really surprised me is that there's basically no customization on the home screen. And what I mean by that is when you download an app, everything's going to be put on the home screen in alphabetical order, and there's no way to change that. You cannot put things into different folders or move them onto different pages. It's all just going to be put in alphabetic order. And that just makes it a lot more difficult and inconvenient to sift through every page of your home screen to try to find the app that you're looking for. Now, obviously you do have workarounds like asking Siri to open an app, but this just doesn't seem like something that should be on a device that's this expensive. And that's not to say that this isn't gonna change down the line. I'm very sure that they're gonna change this either with a software update or at the latest with maybe the second generation of the Vision Pro. But for how revolutionary this device actually is, this was a big oversight and it really is a bummer in my opinion. Another thing that bumps me out is that some some of Apple's native softwares are also not available yet on the Vision Pro, and what I'm referring to mainly is Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro. Now I use Final Cut Pro to edit all of my videos, so I was pretty excited to try it out on the Vision Pro, but again, it's just not an option right now. I'm assuming part of the reason for that is that you also don't have the ability to connect a Bluetooth mouse to control the Vision Pro. It says at this point you can't, so I'm assuming they'll add that down the line. But either way, there is a workaround to this at the very least which is by using the Mac virtual display. So if you just connect your Vision Pro to your MacBook, then you do have the ability to do it that way at least. One last thing to note is that when I first connected the Vision Pro to my MacBook, it was actually really glitchy and it was basically unusable because it was so laggy when I first set it up but I did find a workaround to this, which is going into the display settings on your Mac and changing the resolution size down from 4K to 1080p. Again, that wasn't something I was very excited to have happen, but at the very least is a workaround, and I am actually very impressed by the virtual Mac display now that I've got it working properly without any lag. Now let's talk about some of the other miscellaneous downsides. Firstly, I am still kind of bummed out by the pass-through quality. Even if I'm in a well-lit room like this during the day, it is still pretty grainy. And I know the Vision Pro is said to be a lot better than other VR headsets as far as pass-through goes, but to be honest, I have not used any other headsets like this before, so this is my first experience with pass-through. And I would say it definitely does not look like the marketing material makes it out to be. To be honest, even when I'm screen grabbing on the Vision Pro and getting B-roll for a video like this, it doesn't actually look as poor quality in the B-roll that I film as much as it does in the actual lenses while you're using it. I'll put some roll on right now and I'll try to edit it make it a little more grainy so you can see what it's actually like when you're using the Vision Pro as opposed to what it looks like in a recording. And this graininess does make it a little bit more difficult to interact with things in the real world like writing something down or checking my phone. It makes it a lot harder to read things like that 
but at the same time, it's not too bad because I am still able to walk around safely or talk with my family members if I need to. But either way, I am hoping that this is something that they will improve upon on future generations of this device to make it even more seamless. Next up, and I haven't really used this feature all that much, but the personas that you set up on Vision Pro kind of creep me out. I think there's something about them where they're pretty realistic. I wouldn't say they look bad per se, but what I think the issue is is that they fall in the uncanny valley where they're not quite real, but not quite animated looking, and it's just really off-putting when I look at my persona. However, I do think that this is better than the little me looking guys that you get in something like the metaverse. Either way, I'm sure that this is something that they'll improve upon. It seems like they already are based on some of the beta pictures I've seen for the next software update. One last nitpick is that I just wish I didn't have to press the crown so much when I'm using the Vision Pro. For a device that seems to be pretty much hands-off and has very revolutionary gestures that work really well. I just wish that I didn't have to reach up and press the button so often to open up my home screen, realign the view, or adjust the immersion level. And I don't mean to sound lazy, but when you're so used to doing gestures like tapping your fingers together or scrolling by barely moving your hand, it does seem kind of out of place to have to move your arm all the way up to the top of the headset. Now, a side note on that, I actually did find a bit of a solution for that problem, and I'm gonna be making a separate video going through the accessibility options and some of the hidden features you have in there. If you're interested in watching that, make sure you subscribe to stay tuned. Now, other than that, the other main issue I run into is I do still get a lot of eye strain when I wear the Vision Pro, especially if I've had it on for a long time. And when I say long time, I mean like maybe more than an hour. I've been using this device basically every day and it's been amazing at helping me create a productive workspace where I have basically no distractions that I can be fully immersed in. But by the time I take it off at the end of the day, my eyes are really strained and sore. And I was hoping that that was something I would get used to, that maybe my eyes would adjust to, but in the last two weeks that has not happened. So I did want to ask you guys, if you have more experience than I do with VR, being that this is the first headset like this I've ever used, do your eyes get used to it? I'd love to hear what you have to say. Let me know if you've found any other cons that I didn't hit in this video, and thank you so much for watching.